Hey everybody, it's Dave, Blue Jacket 66 here for another video. I usually say a quick video, this isn't gonna be a quick video. Just kind of feel like listening to myself talk a little bit this evening. I'm not sure how long this one will go, but I uh, bet you it goes 20 to 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. Um, I have no agenda really on this video. Um, I'm gonna be showing some cards, I'm gonna be showing some graded stuff, some pickups all throughout. Uh, and towards the end, uh, we're going to give away a Plain Days Babe Ruth baseball card. You can't fast forward to that because I'll be, in order to enter the giveaway or whatever, uh, you'll have to answer a couple questions. It's not so easy just to say, I'll take it. And one of the questions we'll have to do is something I mentioned within this video, which unfortunately is gonna be kind of long. Sorry to make you watch it all, but there's a lot of long videos that I just, uh, boy, I'll put on because I'm driving somewhere and if they're 30 minutes, that's fantastic. Or laying in bed, trying to go to sleep. Uh, I know just, hey, I'm gonna watch a video for real quick is uh, difficult and this won't, one won't be for that, although you're welcome to watch some of it and come back because I'm gonna show some fantastic stuff. Um, I uh, visited uh, my mother in Kansas City over the weekend because of COVID. I haven't been there as much. I'm very sad to say I've had her out to the house a few times and been there, but it's been a rough year for everybody. But anyway, um, Boy, that camera is shaking and I'm sorry, but uh, I have it kind of up on a box, so it may do a little shaking here. Um, in the basement, when I was a kid, uh, my dad was the collector and he showed me the way, showed me the journey. But uh, at my house growing up, he his getaway was in what we call the fourth bedroom, which was the upper, most upper part of the house where there was just presumably what was supposed to be a large bedroom. Maybe it was a finished attic area. That's where he hung out and uh, he had this great little nook with a bay window looking over wonderful uh, Overland Park and 96th Street off of Blue Jacket. And there's a lot of great memories there, but uh, it, then they moved to a different house and his refuge became uh, a partially finished basement. And what wasn't finished uh, he kept all of his stuff. And when he passed away in 2012, uh, there it was. Um, I don't like talking about uh, the value of cards so much and the price of cards and whether something's a PSA gem and whether they're going up or down. What I like talking about is just baseball cards and my part of the history of it. I, I, would, I do not want to sit around and talk about uh, do I think vintage is better than modern and is Beckett a great, I hate that shit. Uh, but what I like talking about more than anything is the days in the seventies and the early eighties, uh, collecting baseball cards and going to shows and what it was like to put ads in paper, uh, in the early seventies, wanted baseball cards and what happened. A lot of great things happened with that. I told you this is going to be a rambling video just for me. Turn it off if you'd like, that's great. Um, but I could tell some really great stories about those times, you know, whether it's uh, uh, sitting on the front porch with Satchel Paige or the time in 78 when uh, the greatest, uh, probably the greatest baseball pickup of me and my dad's career ever happened. It was such a great pickup and we still have it. Now I have it, them, I'll just say, uh, that I guarantee you if I would sell them or put them for auction, it would immediately go on the front page of the, any auction house in the world, it would be on the cover. I've never shown it and I don't plan to and I don't plan on talking about it. Although I did allude to once uh, when I was interviewed for Sports Collectors Daily, I alluded to it in an interview I did several years ago. But anyway, uh, to the basement, <laughs> when my dad passed away, I was did not want to go through his stuff. He 
started collecting with me. He, he collected everything he did, I followed. Because I wanted to be just like him and he taught me how to be uh, a good person, a man, and how to collect. We collected everything, I've talked about it before. But he'd sold, uh, he was a school teacher, high school mathematician, school teacher. So pro at the worst possible time, but he retired for the most part from teaching in like 96, I think. And so he sold a lot of his good stuff. And by, what I mean by good stuff, I mean good stuff. Like uh, good stuff, good sets, good stuff. Um, to Alan Rosen, Mr. Mint, if you don't know who he is, I'm not sure where you are in the collecting realm, if you don't know who Alan Rosen is or Mr. Mint, uh, who since passed away. And a lot of people have bad things to say about him, but I will say dur during that time and during that sale of some important piece of my dad's collection, he was very kind. He was respectful to my dad and respectful to my mother. And for that, I will be grateful. Uh, um, with that being said, my dad, well, I was thinking about retiring, so he sold off all this great stuff. And what was left was an enormous amount of stuff that is fantastic. Um, by that, I mean he no longer, you know, he sold off his complete Cracker Jack sets and complete T205 sets, etc. That was the, you know, really great, some good stuff. But he, he that was just to get some money and he's probably sold on the way low, but uh, there's a lot of stuff left and he continued to amass stuff. He's always a collector. So yeah, he sold off some really good stuff. He had a bazillion great stuff left and he continued to accumulate from 96 until he passed away in 2012. So I, have to go down in the basement and uh, go through stuff. And is there stuff I want? And of course there is, but it's just not, doesn't feel good uh, taking stuff. But that's been eight years. So I've been kind of skimming over the years and going to layer and layer and the the funny thing is, is you would think that you could go down there and immediately take the prime stuff, prime stuff, great stuff, lesser, lesser, and it, like an peeling an onion until you're down to dud stuff. <clears throat> but it hasn't been like that because he was such a collector that it was just, it's all mixed together and it's a massive amount in a massive area in cardboard boxes or on the floor or in binders and it, it did not make any difference. I could very well find a halfway shredded 1977 hostess panel of Dale Murphy in the bottom of a cardboard box and underneath it a Babe Ruth strip card. That, that's just the way it is. So every time I go down there, I, my mother wants me, I try to, let me go through some stuff. So I do have some stuff that this last trip and every trip I sometimes bring some stuff back and uh, you know, some of it is amazing and some of it's like I have from this trip, which is just some, just little stuff. Cause I didn't want to sit down and go through stuff and I don't want, I just, I just wanted to pick as I, as I walked around. Um, I do have, <coughs> uh, some pickups. I'm doing very well on, on this uh, Thompson 1995 Japanese Thompson Pokemon set. Uh, doing very well on that set of 150 cards. Kate and I am um, kind of buying in lots from Japan. And if you ever buy things in lots, you, you get a better deal than if you're just buying one card. There's no question about it. Those ones I just showed you actually are duplicates because I've bought in several lots of like 12 cards, but within each lot, three of them, I think we already have, but that's okay. I'm getting a good deal on the others. Um, what else have I picked up? Um, 
I got a couple things back from PSA. Uh, I can't remember when I submitted them. This is 2020 Mosaic uh, Mahomes Red. It jammed. And there's glare all over this. Some of these I may show later, probably not, but a little better camera view. And this one's interesting. This is the Justin Herbert Gold Press Proof Die Cut. Donruss numbered to 25. It gemmed. And I didn't pay much money for that. A year, I don't know when, I, when, when it was, very early in the year when this first came out, raw. And I think, I'm not sure what I can get for this, I'll be perfectly honest. And I'm thinking about selling it because Come on, first year quarterback, you may or may not get rookie of the year. This is kind of the top now. Maybe, I, I don't know how much I can get for this, uh, but I wonder if I should just sell it and put it, the money toward, you know, quarterbacks. It's, it's kind of a reach, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I got this on eBay because whenever you see a 1962 Jello and it's a player you like, grab it. This is the mantle. I already have one, but this is really good authentic. It's authentic again because uh, the black border, the cut is outside the black border. Otherwise it looks pretty minty. The 62 Jellos were just uh, released in the Midwest. So uh, they're the hardest Jello issue to get, Jello slash post. Might make a video sometime on how to tell the difference between all the years of Jello and post and how to tell the difference between a Jello and a postcard. I'd have to kind of brush up on it, to be honest with you, a little bit. But 62 jellos are tough. Um, I got a, a big, big, big card for me. Um, I've been uh, searching for this card for a long time. And as I've been searching for it, the price has just been going up, up, up. So I started to weigh between getting a authentic issue, uh, which it's another bazooka card. Those are hand cuts. So those are essentially all gonna be authentic or majority of math. My, I'm gonna show my 69 mantle run that has some high grade ones in it, but blah, blah, blah. Let's just show it. This is, I am, you know, there comes to a point where you're not like it really excited about what are you getting, and so you may not buy. Um, this one's, oh, I'm so happy with this. This is the 59 Bazooka Mantle, and it is in, it's authentic too because the, the black dotted outline, the cuts are, you can see some of the black dot, but for, it's not out, all outside. So it'll get all, they'll get a uh, authentic grade hand cut instead of getting a number. Most, most bazookas just get authentic. So you want one that looks like, a, you know, a great surface and looks beautiful, but it's authentic. And I just happen to get what I feel is I nailed it on this and I just got a great deal. I'm so happy. Uh, with this. So now I own every single uh, Bazooka Mantle. And um, they're all in PSA 8s except for two are authentic, or two are authentic. The rest are PSA 8s and this one's an authentic. And God, this is just, I mean, the surface is just, it's just a mint surface. Just cut outside, you know, the edges are a little bit soft, that's perfectly fine. The back looks good, there's no crap on it, so. Um, if you guys check out, I mean, th this took the whole back panel, you know. Here's a bazooka gum. It's the whole back panel of the bazooka gum. It's amazing that these things were not all scuffed up. But, uh, the 59 is a, it's a huge, big image. It's a big card. It's got Aaron, it's got Maze, it's got Ashbury. It's got tons of stars. You might look into the 59 Bazooka. I think you'd be really happy if you search that on eBay or start searching for some cards. Great images, beautiful color, and uh, really classic cards. I've seen the sets come up for auction, uh, auction every once in a while. And uh, there was actually one somewhat recently within the past few months, but uh, I have a little bit of problem paying a lot of money when, I can't remember even how many are in the set, but you know, 
a lot of cards are for the guys you don't really have any interest in. So um, I would like to get the uh, Aaron and Maze. It's not the greatest image of Maze, but it's good stuff right there. Been waiting a long time for that one. So, um, what else we got there? Okay, so anyway, we're down in the basement, Dan's basement. Powder and usually after my mother goes to bed, I'll go down and just look. And you get to be looking in a box, and next thing you know, three hours have gone by. And there's so much stuff. And I'm thinking two things, there's so much stuff. One, I'm very seriously thinking about putting together some Blue Jacket 66 mystery boxes at price, you know, it won't be worth my time to do have a 25 or $30 box. But maybe a fifty, a hundred, and a two hundred and fifty dollar box, where I am essentially clearing out some of that stuff. Some of that stuff, I'm just gonna. I'm. I don't know what I'm gonna do because usually when I walk in the basement, I look around and I start and I walk right out because I just it's complete overload. I mean, and some of it is not valuable stuff. There's probably. I t you want to talk junk wax? I got junk wax. I got fucking junk wax. Um, boxes and boxes and, and boxes of, and cases of junk wax. There must be uh, 2587 top sets. There must be 3088s. There must be, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, it all goes back to uh, late 70s uh, through very early 90s. I'm not sure what to do. I'm thinking about when this clears up, having a couple YouTubers and spending a long weekend, if not longer, kind of going through some stuff and getting it out of there. I mean, you know, I hate to, you know, throw stuff away, but when you got five cases of 91 Leaf baseball, uh, you know, and the box sells for 10 bucks. I don't want to put that on eBay and I don't want to ship it. I mean, it costs 10 times more to ship it. I don't know. So I don't know what I'm going to do. So let's see some things that I just grabbed just for fun. Uh, this box, food and beverage, these are all uh, Kellogg's 3D sets, 75 3D set. Here's a 92 Kellogg set. Here's the, I believe this is the seventh, 1970. Anyway, I thought I would snag myself uh, some more to complete my run of Kellogg's 3D sets, their food and beverage, and they're shiny, cool, and I like them. Um, I got myself a Welcome Back Cotter complete set. Why did I pass up? the 33 Gaudi Gehrig and bring home this because that's the way Blue Jacket 66 rolls. I like Mork and Mindy. I mean, well, I like Mork and Mindy, but this is Welcome Back, Cotter. Um, here's a couple boxes of baseball scratch-offs. Were they from 81? Yeah, 81. Here's the big pack and you scratch off and it's a little baseball game and there's uh, a player represented on each card. 
Thought I'd bring myself a couple of boxes of that home. And why not a box of 87 rack packs? I gotta clean out the basement. If I don't, my mother starts yelling at me to get stuff out of her basement, so took a little of that. Um, I saw sitting on a table a full bunch of 1970 Topps posters, which are ultra cool. Um, they're in terrible condition. But these are what you had on your wall when you were a kid. I did. And here's a whole stack of the 68 Tops posters. Uh, you know, complete set. You know, uh, I had stuff like this all over my walls when I was a kid. But the one thing, one thing that I had, uh, just a couple of, because my mother bought Hawaiian Punch, and I was a big Hawaiian Punch kid. But as I recall, back around 70, 71, 72, sometime around there, high C, big can of high C juice, had football players on the label, on the back side of the label. So if you get a razor blade and you cut down along the big can of juice and pull the whole label off, on the back side of the label, there were football players. And I specifically remember Dallas Cowboy football players because I only got a couple of them because again, mom didn't buy high C. But uh, um, I think I had a Bob Lilly. But did anybody else know what I'm talking about with those high C posters? Maybe I just dreamed it, but I'm, I'm certain of it. Okay. Okay, I saw a stack of cards, grabbed it. I went ahead and put it in a binder. It's the 77 cloth stickers. I already have a couple sets of this. This one looks really nice. So I grabbed that little stack of cards and put it in a binder. 77 cloth stickers are super cool. Uh, there was a test issue earlier. In the 70s, John Mangini has some of those. Oh, I grabbed uh, some 67 Topps pinups. There's, there's a stack of about 100 of those, so I put myself together a little setty set and uh, put it in some pages that look like these pages are from like 1970. What else did uh, I stumbled upon this? I was going through, uh, you know, uh, thing of cards and it said something something 72 incomplete and I opened it up and there's just a whole bunch of cards there's some basketball cards but lo and behold in that there is a complete set of 72 73 basketball so I grabbed that stack and I put them in a binder and there's the Irving uh, I didn't I put the uh, the hot cards, they're in top loaders, and I just put them in a four slot page. So there's Irving, there's my uh, Maravich, Wilt, Jabbar, and uh, Phil Jackson, there's Julius Irving All Star, and uh, who's, oh, Artist Gilmore Rookie, but. Uh, this set is Gem Mint, which is amazing because it's been a, in a stack in a basement now for freaking four years. But I like vintage basketball. Um, I taped, you may say, what's all that tape? But I went ahead and put these in top loaders and put them in a four- Space uh, Ultra Pro sheet. Then I put some tape at the top so they wouldn't fall out. But the Irving is 
not perfectly centered, but otherwise it looks just mint. These are tough to s center anyway. None of those look like they're perfectly centered, but remember I showed my Okay, so anyway, uh, those are cool to grab. Um, I grabbed a couple old shoe boxes that have autographed baseballs in them. I don't know, there's about 25 balls here. Um, most of these, I think, are, this is Kansas City Royals, this would be around 1970. Most of them are like uh, 50s baseball, uh, specifically like Cardinals. So this would have been the time when Kansas City uh, uh, debuted in, the Royals debuted in 69. We got Lou Pinella, Pat Kelly, I'm trying to, these names, see if I can remember them. Jim York, remember him, a pitcher. Ed Kirkpatrick is the catcher. What else we got here? Bergmeier, another pitcher. Anyway, what else we got here? Mostly, I don't recognize his name here. Oh, this is Cardinal. So that's Ina Slaughter. Red Shandings, Mutual. So anyway, just a crap load of mid-50s. Here's another Cardinals. Mutual. I don't know, I'm terrible at recognizing signatures. Larry Doby. Anyway, I got a bunch of balls because they're cool. And this is the type of stuff that if, you know, I'm just, imagine me putting together a box. A mystery box. I can certainly see me throwing one of those balls in with all the other stuff for the mystery box. Okay. Um, I grabbed this, uh, saw this land, freaking floor or something. Uh, 69 bazooka and this is mint it's a 1969 bazooka bubblegum box and it is the uh, all-time greats uh, cards on the box this one has Matthewson and Grover Cleveland Alexander kids would cut those out and on the back side Chief Bender and Cy Young So that's cool. Where's the? Yeah. Here's another bazooka box. Oh, but anyway, I grabbed that one. Um. So I, and then there's just I just. You know, you go through a box and you see a card and you say, Hunter, I wonder if there's a set of that. So, all sorts of goofy stuff. I think Ray from Philly collects these. these this is a 79 uh, Topps Chewing Gum, the cartoon insert, these complete sets. I got three complete sets of those. If anybody's interested in those, let me know. Um, these Topps insert game, got a few sets of these. This set's not in good condition. This one looks pretty minty. Let's see. Yeah. Mandel's number two. Anyway. Complete, couple complete sets of those. So I threw in some of these that were laying around. I'm telling you that basement is, is crazy. It's trashed. 
Um, but I found some of these old holders. So I can find these by the thousands. I can find uh, mailers by the thousands. I can find penny sleeves by the thousands. You think the man would have some top loaders? No top loaders. Never fold a, Never found a top loader down there. Picked up the... Uh, uh, this is a Jackie Robinson first day of issue uh, stamp. First day cover. And this one's autographed by uh, Leo Drosher. And another one I found is autographed by Duke Snyder. Thought that was pretty cool. I found an 89 uh, score... Uh, a bunch of 89 score sets, which are have zero value, so I just pulled cards out. Here's a Monty. This is the uh, baseball favorite set we made, my dad and I made in 1979. This is the Monty Urban. It's the extension of the uh, 53 Bowman black and white. We did a Monty. We did you check out my video uh, way, 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 way back. But anyway, here's the Monty Urban. Uh, Monty Urban autographed that one. Just in a box of cards with like 77 tops. It's crazy. Uh, oh, you know, I love my hires. Here's a Jack Jensen hires root beer. And food and beverage, yes sir. Johnston Cookies, Del Crandall. Uh, there's a Tony Gwynn. This is just goofy. Some 50, a whole bunch of 57 tops. I'm telling you, there are more, I, I got more 50s cards, thousands of 50 cards. Tens and tens of thousands of them. I don't know what to do with them. I don't know what to do. None of them are in great shape. But, uh, saw this one laying around. This is Robin Roberts, Donruss Hall of Fame Heroes. Thought that was cool. Same thing with the Kiner. I thought was cool. Saw that laying there. Dom DiMaggio. I thought that was cool. DiMaggio. I thought that was cool. Joe Wood. I saw that in a box. Uh, Dandy Potato Chips. Sid Gordman. I don't, I don't know. Basketball. And, and I saw this. Had to grab this. Dare to Bear Scratch Off Trading Cards. 10 cards per pack. Hot Shots. Collector Cards for Men. Let's open that. This channel is not for children. <laughs> okay, this one does not show nudity. This one, <laughs> this one does, this one does. Why am I showing this? This one doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> nice. Oh, goodness. Okay, anyway, who knew they existed, but Hot Shots Original 1994. It's the first pack I've ever cracked of those. <laughs> wow, I'll be sending those to PS. What else we got? Oh, shit, I found a binder that had um, 75 or so of these Topps photos. Remember this, this set from the was it 51? Here's the Jesse Owens. And I, I think uh, they came in a pack and I think you had to develop them when they exposed them to light or maybe a little water, I don't know. Here's the Ty Cobb. I'm just saying, stuff like this was, was would, uh, I don't know, you dig and dig and dig and dig and dig. Oh, there's some stuff, it's crazy. A whole bunch of autograph cards. Here's a couple big things of autograph cards. Found some basketball singles. Couple creams. Couple Dr. 
Jays, bunch of Dawkins. So, you know, early 70s. I think that's Parrish's rookie card. Uh, early 70s basketball. So, we'll pick those up. I got a crap load of Topps Finest, 93 Topps Finest. So many sets down there, so many binders. Uh, but there were some singles laying around in some boxes. So I took the Griffey, Bonds, Ryan, Clemens, Frank Thomas, another Ripken, Ricky. So, yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I guess... Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to do some of those mystery boxes. I'm a big on selling, especially selling to friends and selling to YouTubers, but I guarantee it'll be good because anybody that gets one is going to open it up on camera and I'm not going to have my name attached to something that's a dud. So, yeah, I guess I was feeling a little bit sentimental. I watched John Mangini's My Collection and I was just so blown away by it because it reminded me so much of how my dad collected which he collected for the love of it. He, if, and he was a big type collector. He loved his 50s. He loved his uh, Cracker Jacks and, and Bowman's. And he, he liked some of the tobacco cards where he collected in sets. But he really was a type collector and he would collect type cards, one of every single issue. And he didn't care if it was highest grade or high grade. And he didn't care if it was a, a Cobb or a Smokey Burgess. It, it, it could be Del Crandall. He didn't care. And that's when I look at John Mangini's collection, you know, I see someone who loves baseball cards and loves the history of the game and the players themselves more than the inherent value. And don't get me wrong, his collection is astronomically high in value. But you know that that's not where his heart lives with that. And uh, that's not where my heart looks lives either. And that's why uh, I'm getting a little bit tired of the hobby seems to be, it's, you know, since COVID in 2020, and we know the value, quote unquote, prices are high in the way we have to acknowledge that because we wanna buy cards and we have to acknowledge that they're going up in value. Uh, and that's good, that's good. Um, but I hate that to be the emphasis of so many videos and so many collectors is, the investor slash prospecting slash value of it rather than remembering what got us here. And I always try to think about the collectors and we're talking the early collectors of the forties and fifties who, you know, send each other cards by the hundreds, or, you know, after communicating by letter, hey, pick out what you like. And, you know, we've come a long way and that's just the way it is. And we've come a long way for the better, but, uh, uh, I am very much uh, drawn to and have an affinity toward, uh, probably because I'm older, the uh, vintage collecting, the old school collecting, and the love of the hobby. Um, very, very much. Uh, I try to protect that the best I can. Um, so I know it was a long video. And yeah, we're gonna do that roof giveaway. Um, but I, I need to, to, for me to send you this roof, you need to the first one to answer two questions and they're, they're not easy questions. Um, let me think of the questions. One, I will ask, oh, who came over in 1996 and bought a significant portion of my dad's collection. Who was that person? The second thing I need you to answer is, I did it one time in one of my past videos, uh, not too long ago, year two, year, year and a half, make a video which took place actually down in my mother's basement. And you can see some cards and sets behind me. In that video, I highlighted a baseball card that I had acquired, and you need to tell me what that card is. So answer two questions. One, um, who bought my dad's, part of my dad's collection in 1996? What was the name of that man? And number two, 
what is the baseball card I highlighted in the video, uh, which took place uh, partially, at least in the beginning, in my mother's basement. And if you are the first, I've got this in this old yellow top loader. Uh, well, I'll try to get it. I'm not going to get a nice one. I'm giving it away for free. This is a 1929 R316 Cation Publications, Babe Ruth. It's not in good condition. The back looks like it was in some sort of a uh, scrapbook or something. Classic image. I think that's a Conlon image, isn't it? I will send that out to you free of charge if you're the first one to answer those two questions. So, uh, I know I rambled on, but sometimes I just wanna talk. Just felt like talking. Uh, nothing exciting, just showing a little bit of stuff. And uh, thanks for watching.